Um, yes, we had a very nice time at the uh, GCFF event last year. Uh, I think we had very nice follow up from folks and anyone who became involved in our company. It's nice to know that uh, the stock is up about 100% since this time last year. I'm going to present my slides now and uh, I want to be very clear that I'm going to skip uh, a large number of these slides in an effort to try to maintain some time for questions at the end. I'm also going to keep it very high level. Uh, Lineage is a publicly traded approximately $400 million company, so I may be making some forward-looking statements, and of course I refer everyone to our risk factors that are filed uh, and available for your review. Now, what Lineage is focused on is we manufacture specific cell types of your body, and then we transplant those cell types in order to restore function or activity that's lost to conditions of aging or, uh, or disease. This is, um, this is not cell therapy, how you often think of it. Many people think of cell therapy as undifferentiated stem cells but we never put an undifferentiated stem cell in the body. What we do is much more like transplant medicine. We manufacture the cells that your body needs, and then we transplant those highly differentiated cells. So there's no stem cells that are being administered to a patient. If a patient needs retina cells, we give them retina cells. If they need spinal cord cells, we give them spinal cord cells and so on. Uh, this is an approach that we think is powerful because cells can accomplish things which are beyond the reach of traditional small molecules and antibodies, and we have seen some of the examples of this, and I will describe that in the presentation. And I'll add that the company is in a strong financial situation. At our last reported quarter, we had approximately $68.7 million in cash and marketable securities uh, in U.S. numbers. So we start with undifferentiated cell lines. Uh, these cell lines are pluripotent and they can be expanded forever. So a single cell line frozen away somewhere can be thawed and grown and those cells can divide and it can provide a countless number of cells. At one point during those cells as they are expanding in number, we begin to give those cells instructions to become specific cell types. Um, they are capable of becoming any of the 200 cell types in your body. However, we focus clinically in retina cells, spinal cord cells, and certain innate immune cells. We do this at our own manufacturing facility, and we have one of the largest patent estates in cell therapy. The company has been around for a very long time, although I've been CEO of this company only for three years. This is an image of our pipeline as it stands today. We have completed uh, 24 patient treatments in our dry age-related macular degeneration program, and we have been reporting very exciting data from that study. We also have treated 25 patients with spinal cord injury and approximately seven patients with non-small cell lung cancer. All of these programs have received validating external support from companies like, or groups like the IIA or CIRM or Cancer Research UK. I'm going to speak about dry AMD because this is one of the leading causes of blindness in the world, and it's caused by the death of specialized retina cells in the back of the eye. Essentially, a wound in the back of your eye begins to form as retina cells die off. And as they die off in a larger and larger area, of course, that impairs your vision and you can go blind. There are no approved therapies currently from the US FDA for this treatment. Your best medicine uh, is eating well and quitting smoking if you have this condition. Incredibly, there, are, there is a related condition called wet AMD for which there are successful products, but the vast majority of people suffer actually from the dry form. To be clear, this is not dry eye, this is dry age-related macular degeneration. What we do to treat this problem is we manufacture new retina cells and transplant them directly to the eye. This is a one-time procedure. 
It is not gene therapy. We do not genetically manipulate the cells. We grow them, we differentiate them, and we transplant them in order to try to preserve a patient's vision. We have made significant strides in our manufacturing and our manufacturing scale is already up to 2,500 clinical doses per batch from a three liter bioreactor. And because our cells are, uh, because we have um, worked out the methods for this scaling, we can go much larger. We are growing these cells on uh, three dimensional uh, containers on microcarriers. The landscape for therapies in dry AMD is very busy because it is an enormous market opportunity. It could be more than 10 billion US dollars. We are the most advanced and the most experienced cell therapy approach, having treated more patients than anyone else. The clinical data has shown signs of structural improvement, functional improvements, and a tolerable uh, safety profile. Most importantly, uh, we have seen patients who have exhibited retinal restoration. And that is incredible because human beings are not capable of regrowing retinal tissue. Now, you may know that a starfish can regrow an appendage if it is lost, but that does not occur in the back of the human eye. So in order to demonstrate retinal restoration, you need to deliver replacement cells. Every other approach currently, all of these other companies that are working, they are trying to slow the growth rate of the atrophy. We have actually shown patients who have reversed the atrophy. We've seen this uh, mostly in patients that have impaired vision, but who are not legally blind. So you can see here in our clinical trial, the first 12 patients were legally blind, very advanced disease but in patients that were losing their vision, they were not yet legally blind, they were able, some of these patients were able to exhibit this incredible phenomenon of restoration. We principally observe this using a technique called OCT. This gives you a nearly histological level of visibility into the retinal tissue layers, and you can see very clearly what level of restoration has occurred. I'm going to skip this slide for time. I'm going to skip this slide also for time. I'm going to show you an example of how powerful OCT is. This is in uh, two charts showing one patient's eye, uh, showing how large the area of atrophy is over time. This is over three years. Using the traditional approach of FAF, you can see that we have reduced the growth rate compared to the untreated eye. But when you use OCT imaging and you get a clear picture of what's happening, you can see in that green line that we actually made the area of atrophy smaller. And after three years, it's still the same size, whereas the untreated eye continued to grow. The untreated eye is an orange. So this is an extraordinary finding and is very encouraging to people who are otherwise losing their vision. Um, further examples around some of the earlier stage disease, how we're able to halt it in its tracks is exhibited. This is again a very technical image, but I'd like to point you to the bottom left hand panel where the red line shows the original size of the area of atrophy and the blue line shows the same area after treatment and you can see it's significantly smaller. Here again, in a different patient, the blue line, the yellow, the red, those are areas of atrophy. And you can see those small areas actually have resolved completely and the larger area is smaller. So again, this is something that no other company has ever shown. The patient's vision is looking encouraging in, in both cases. Here you see a, a 36 letter difference after three years. That's their ability to read letters on an eye chart. So it's a very durable approach. Here's the other patient that I showed, the green line showing a significant increase in their vision compared to uh, not much of a change at all in the untreated eye. The pooled patients, the 12 pooled patients, they are still going through and we're still collecting data, but you can see even with just 12 patients, there is a statistically significant difference between the lines of the treated eyes and the untreated eyes in this patient population. 
Uh, and this just gives you a sense of how 10 or 15 letters of improvement can be life-changing. It could mean the difference between having your driver's license or being able to read a message on your phone. Patients are also reporting positive uh, indications on patient reported outcomes. And if you visit our website, you can actually watch interviews with some of the people who are treated with our therapy, talking about their experiences and how happy they are with it. We think that we are very well positioned to capture a major commercial opportunity. The clinical data from the competition has uh, been not as strong as hoped and that provides an opportunity for us to move quickly and try to uh, be victorious in addressing this situation. Dry age-related macular degeneration is only one of our approaches. We are doing something similar with spinal cord injury. We manufacture, I skip this slide, uh, we manufacture oligodendrocyte progenitor cells, which are responsible for producing myelin, which allow the electrical connections to be retained between the, the brain and the upper extremities. This is a wonderful program that has all of the appropriate designations uh, from uh, CIRM and, and the FDA and may have application beyond just spinal cord injury. The top panel is indicative of what we are doing with patients. Uh, that upper left, this is not a human slice, this is a rodent slice, but it's uh, representative or illustrative of what we do. That is a cavity or a gap in the spinal cord. We manufacture the cells, we transplant them and replace them to fill that material so that it can carry the electrical connection. We treat the patients approximately three to six weeks after the injury, so we do not need to be present at the time of injury. The safety profile has been extraordinary. There were 534 adverse events in this clinical study, uh, only one of which was deemed to be possibly related to our cells. So we think that that is very encouraging data. We also have been able to reduce the formation of a tissue, uh, avoidance of a cavity, which can form in these patients and is associated with complications. Most exciting, of course, is mobility and approximately one third of patients gained two or more levels on the standard motor score. So these are individuals who are gaining function, gaining an ability to move their shoulders or their arms or grasp their hands together. Uh, this is just the assessment tool that's used in this field. We are trying to move patients from areas such as C4 to C6, where you go from 24 hour support and care to having a very high level of independence, being able to bathe yourself, feed yourself, uh, use the bathroom without assistance. Again, detail that I will pass for right now, but I will say that we're very excited about the safety profile and the efficacy signals that we are seeing in this clinical trial using this approach. I'm going to pass some of the advancements that we are using in cell delivery, only to say that we are exploring those and we plan to go into the clinic very soon with them. We additionally have made significant increases in our production and our purity and how we assay our cells. Uh, this is a great example here. I'll stop just to show that these are levels of impurities about older clinical material and our newer material. The older material is in blue and you can see it has very high levels of impurities, whereas our material is in orange. It's much cleaner. If you asked me, I would prefer to have the orange form of the cells administered than the blue form of the cells administered. Uh, I will next thirdly just mention that we also are looking at oncology because we can manufacture dendritic cells. These are part of your immune system that help present antigens to the body. We can differentiate dendritic cells and we can load them with all sorts of different antigens. They could be cancer or tumor antigens. They could be viral antigens. Uh, we have briefly looked at COVID for this approach to, because it gives a very strong presentation of an antigen to the human body. And this is an area that we have begun to enter into strategic alliances. So I will just conclude by saying that Lineage is a growing cell therapy leader working on regenerative medicine by manufacturing specific cell types and transplanting them to the body. We are currently in the clinic with three programs. We control our own manufacturing. We have very large barriers of protection. The company is well-funded and is a growing and emerging leader in regenerative medicine. 
Gilbert, I hope I have left a little bit of time for uh, for questions. I will stop sharing and just invite everyone to be able to uh, read more about and watch some of the videos on our site if they're interested in the company. Great, Brian. So let's uh, get to the questions now. The first one, Matthew here is asking in all your in your three clinical trial programs, do you think which one has the biggest market potential? Do you think? Matthew, thank you for that question. I, I think the oncology is the largest because it is a platform. The dendritic cells could use any antigen. And so you might have a brain cancer antigen, and then you choose a different ovarian cancer antigen. It's a different product. So if you aggregate all of the different potential products, and there could be hundreds or thousands of them, um, that would be the largest market opportunity. However, uh, in terms of discrete products, dry AMD has many millions of individuals and no therapy. And so dry AMD is, is widely accepted as a tremendously large commercial opportunity for everyone who's working in that. And probably the short answer is dry AMD is the largest commercial opportunity. Great. The next one coming from uh, Ryan here. Ryan is asking, uh, what's your burn rate now at your company? Well, thank you, Ryan. Um, we're not going to provide forward uh, guidance, but I can tell you historically, we have been spending between five and six million dollars per quarter. Uh, so that's, you know, approximately 25, 24 million dollars per year. Um, as because we are maturing and going into later stage clinical trials, I expect we will be investing more capital going forward. But those are the numbers historically. This next question from Donnie here is as uh, how will you seek uh, acquisition from the major pharmaceutical uh, companies? Oh, thank you for the question, Donnie. Um, uh, we're not necessarily seeking to be acquired. Oftentimes what happens is that the large pharmaceutical company agrees with the opportunity and is really excited about the future and they, they may want to place a bid and try to acquire a company. Um, that is not something that I plan for. That is something I would respond to. What I'm planning for is just growing and growing and growing so that if someday we are acquired, that it would be a very expensive acquisition. And the reason what I'm, the, the, excuse me, the method by which I am trying to do that is to go into more programs. Because we have cells, which can become any of the cells of your body, we could potentially get into many more areas than just the three that we are in today. And so it reminds me of Amazon because Amazon only used to sell books and now they sell everything. And so it's a similar kind of idea as I get excited when I think about different kinds of cells that we could grow. And I think that, you know, we could be a very successful standalone company or maybe someone will want to own us in the future. I, I just want to be successful no matter how it happens. Sure. Well, let me get you the last question here. I'm combining two from two from Ming and Kin. So he's asking about, uh, are you establishing any more partners in your development? And how about Asia? Any, any plans for that market? We are always interested in any sort of partnership that can accelerate our business. Um, in some situations, we may want to have majority control of an asset. In other cases, we may want to have minority control of an asset. Um, I think on the oncology platform, because the the MHC matching, the protein matching, and the uh, there's opportunities there for Asian partnering, which I think is very interesting, and I would like to be able to to do that. Uh, so every every opportunity when we get phone calls or or emails, we have a a team that evaluates whether it'll help accelerate our business. So certainly we, we think that partnering in, in all areas is beneficial to our growth plan. Great. Uh, thank you, Brian, for your time here today uh, to return to our event for these uh, important updates for us. I appreciate it, Gilbert. Thanks so much. And we can always respond to any other questions through our, through our email contacts. Definitely. So hope to see more happy investors uh, maybe next year when uh, you return again. Uh, thank you again for your time. I look forward. Thank you. Bye-bye.